Before all these big stories come and smack you in the face, we're gonna need to have you subscribe to the channel because if you subscribe to the channel, I'm hearing that Oreo cookies fall from the sky, maybe a few donuts. Heck, cue the eggplants. That's right, throw a little healthy food in there. Thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the content. Let's get into it. So much is happening in the world of gaming. I don't even know how to contain my hype at the moment. And you would think after the Game Awards last night and Zelda didn't win Game of the Year and there was no Nintendo Switch 2 announcement and, well, no announcement from Nintendo directly at all that my hype would be at an all-time low. And you know what? If that's what you thought, you're incorrect, and today's news is going to explain why. We do have a smidge of Nintendo Switch 2 news coming in one of our final stories today. But more than that, we have news on the next Zelda game, along with some clarifications about Nintendo's care around Tears of the Kingdom and the much widely debated Zelda timeline, the sacred timeline of all Nintendo timelines. <sighs> You're probably not going to like that news. More than that, we have updates from the Game Awards, including brand new games coming to Nintendo Switch and likely Nintendo Switch 2. We'll get into that. Obviously, Nintendo did win some awards last night. All three of their major games taking home the prize. Oh, and by the way, did you want news on Metroid Prime 4? Well, well, nothing happened at the Game Awards last night for Metroid Prime 4. It doesn't mean I don't have a report for you, baby, and it's pretty exciting, so whew, we got to get into that. And, you know... The weird thing, and, and this is where I have to actually bring my energy down a little bit, this is quite a serious story. Nintendo had to cancel an event for next year that many people were excited for because their own employees, along with fans, were facing death threats. <laughs> Now the first story we're going to talk about is a bit exciting and also maybe disappointing for some because there's a brand new interview with Eiji Aonuma and Fuji Bayashi by Game Informer. No real surprise, they were in town for the Game Awards, so there was some interviews. And this interview went over a couple things. One, we're going to be talking about features from Tears of the Kingdom entering brand new games and then their thoughts on the timeline. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive right in. So first on the Ultra Hand returning in future games. So Fuji Bayashi said... When we're creating a title, say Tears of the Kingdom, as you mentioned, the crux of the experience is playing Tears of the Kingdom is Ultra Hand and the freedom to create. As you mentioned, that is what Tears of the Kingdom is. So every time we're making a Zelda title, we want to create something new. If, for example, there was any continuation of Tears of the Kingdom and we were to bring in, say, Ultra Hand, then I think to us it would feel like, well, we're just bringing in Tears of the Kingdom as is. What we want to do from a game creator's perspective is create something new. From that perspective, I don't think we'll be seeing Ultra Hand in every Zelda game or really anything in the future. Aonuma added, when you're talking about Ultra Hand, that is really a core idea for Tears of the Kingdom, and I think it represents our approach of kind of putting everything we could into this game. You know, first putting all our ideas in, and then being very selective about what we wanted to remain, removing all the parts that didn't make sense or didn't fit perfectly. This game, then, is the result of that selection process. This time, you'll see that there is no DLC because of that process. We created what we wanted to create and felt that it was complete in that fashion. So from that aspect as well, I think we definitely won't be including Ultra Hand in titles going forward. Now that's obviously interesting. I didn't really think that Ultra Hand would be something returning to the series, but it is something that a lot of us love. It does make Tears of the Kingdom stand out. But, you know what also makes the Zelda series stand out? The timeline. And, well, we got some clarification on that as well. So Game Informer said, When you're developing a new Zelda title, obviously your primary focus is on core gameplay. But the timeline placement discussion has become more important and prevalent among the fans of the series. How much consideration and importance does the development team put into these discussions? Fujibayashi says, as you mentioned, we realize that fans have a great time theorizing and enjoy thinking about where things fit on the timeline. That's something the development team recognizes and it considers. But to an extent, and I say to an extent, because if we get too into the weeds or too detailed in that placement, it results in kind of creating restraints on our creativity. 
the process of creating new ideas becomes restricted because we're so tied up in trying to make this fit into a very specific spot in the timeline. We consider it, but not to an extent where we feel that our development process feels restricted or constrained. Then Alnuma added in, another point kind of related is that we've been able to realize more fully a real working world because of technology. You are also able to fine tune all the details of that world, but we don't always want to do that just because we now can. Instead, as people play the game, we want to give them the ability to exist in that world and a world that they can interpret in their own way. And so, that's also something we really keep in mind as we're continuing to develop the games. They also were later asked about timeline placement of the Hyrule scene in the Raru time period on if it went before Skyward Sword, and they literally said it could be both. Yeah. They really just don't seem to care. Also, as a minor note on the next Zelda, it's not going to be a sequel to Tears of the Kingdom. Aiji Aonuma reiterated that they did everything they wanted to do in this world, and they do not plan to revisit it. Now, the interesting part here, of course, is that, look, I've always said for years, I don't think Nintendo actually gives two flying hoots about the Zelda timeline. And while it does seem that they consider it, it's not a major consideration when they're making games, at least at this time. So we're going to keep theorizing away. We're going to keep doing whatever we want. But in the end, uh, they don't really seem to care. That actually upset some Zelda fans because it became very obvious in Tears of the Kingdom that they didn't really seem to care for what had already happened. And while we try to make arguments to still fit it in and we had a whole podcast on it, hey, they don't care. So... It is what it is, and uh, I honestly just want to continue to get great and amazing games because that's what matters to me. Next, Nintendo actually dropped a brand new update for Nintendo Switch Online, and oh man, it's actually a pretty neat one. One of the games we knew was coming, we didn't know about the other two, so we're pretty happy about it. Let's just dive right in. You can see the trailer right now. They posted it up on social media. We are going to be getting Harvest Moon 64, 1080 Snowboarding, and Jet Force Gemini. They also then did, right after that, announce that they would be extending a free seven-day trial for NSO for a limited time. They didn't tell us how long that limited time is. I presume probably till the end of the month, maybe to encourage people to try out these Nintendo 64 games. Look, this isn't like the biggest update in the world, although, hey, if you're really into these games, but it is nice to continue to see Nintendo drop games and even more games than we originally thought they were going to drop here in December. So N64 fans rejoice. You got a big update, now we get to go on to our next big story. And that is of course the elephant in the room, that is the Game Awards. Look, we can't ignore the Game Awards happened, and first off, we need to congratulate all of the winners of the Game Awards. Baldur's Gate 3 took home Game of the Year, several other winners going on, but let's just talk about Nintendo for a moment, because all three of their major games this year, and they have more than three, but the three biggest ones, the most highest reviewed ones, all took home awards. So first, we'll start with Super Mario Bros. Wonder, it took home best family game to absolutely no one's surprise. Then we had Pikmin 4 taking home best sim slash strategy game and actually faced some pretty stiff competition and it wasn't a guarantee Pikmin 4 was going to win. So I'm very happy to see Pikmin 4 take this home. Finally, that IP getting the recognition it deserves at a big event like this. I don't know if it's going to lead to a boost in sales, but I certainly hope so. And then yes, Tears of the Kingdom that many of us hoped was going to end up winning game of the year did still win a major award. That being best action adventure game and look we got this really cool new art posted by nintendo of europe for it i don't know where this official art came from but thank you so much because it looks absolutely incredible now we have a slew of games that were announced that are coming to nintendo switch with some demos and other stuff and one likely coming to nintendo switch too maybe multiple of them first let's start off with prince of persia so prince of persia the lost crown this kind of leaked ahead of time but it is getting a demo on january 11th and releasing on january 18th Got a new trailer. It looks really, really cool. There's actually another new game called Zao. It was announced and it's heading to Switch. And it just looks very, very unique, similar to maybe some of the other really good indie games that we've gotten over the last few years. But this looks like just another one to toss on the pile. We had a big surprise from Sega. They dropped that they're actually making brand new games for Jet Set Radio, Shinobi, Golden Axe, Streets of Rays, and Crazy Taxi. Now look, 
They didn't announce any platforms for this or anything right now, and that means these games could be a year or two, maybe three away, but it's still nice to know they are dedicated to making new games in those IPs. And another interesting one is that a nice Wii classic is coming back, World of Goo, except it's getting a sequel in World of Goo 2. No platforms announced for this one, although they said it is coming soon. Uh, there's some hints out there that they basically said it's coming to Nintendo, but that's all they would say. Some people are speculating on if they're sort of waiting for a Switch 2 announcement. No, this isn't a game that would need a Switch 2, but why wouldn't you announce the platforms right now if it's coming out in the next three months? I don't know. That's not for me to worry about. That's obviously for the developers of World of Goo 2 to worry about. And the last big game that I guess I'm going to bring up, technically I'm really excited for Visions of Mana. Uh, just a small little tease for that. Again, it's a ways off and I'm, I'm hoping it comes to Nintendo Switch 2. But this is the big one. Monster Hunter Wilds was announced for 2025. And many Nintendo fans, justifiably so, just due to how well the Monster Hunter truly sells on Nintendo platforms, suspect it's going to be coming to Nintendo's next platform, and it looks absolutely incredible. Nintendo did not have any big announcements or even small announcements at this event, and I'm going to tell you, look, I understand you might be disappointed in that. However, it also could be sort of a silver lining because with the Switch nearing its end of life, if they don't have anything to show here, that means they might not have any major, major announcements left for Nintendo Switch that don't also involve Nintendo Switch 2. So let's just hold on to our butt cheeks and see what happens as we enter into 2024. Next up, we just have to briefly talk about Nintendo Live Tokyo 2024. And this is a bit of a serious conversation. So we're no jokes here, no super high energy. The event's been canceled. And according to Nintendo, and you know, this is like a paraphrase of their quote, due to threats to staff and attendees. That's right, there have been threats happening to Nintendo staff and attendees, enough of them for Nintendo to decide to cancel the entire event. All the tournaments are being canceled. Uh, they're gonna be rescheduled to a future date, not announced at this time. And this is quite sad because the Tokyo you know, show is gonna happen on January 20th to the 21st. Fans were really excited to go and see these tournaments and enjoy concerts and nice food. And you know what? Hey, the last one of these they did had Super Mario Bros. Wonder as a demo before the game came out. So people were hoping to maybe get their hands on maybe playing Princess Peach Showtime or or, you know, if Switch 2 was revealed before it, maybe a chance to try out or at least see Switch 2 in a case or something like that. Unfortunately, none of this is going to be possible because they literally had some very, very serious threats lobbied against them. They clearly didn't think the security was going to be good enough to be able to handle whatever these threats are. Unfortunately, this is probably more of a legal matter than it is anything else, so we're not going to get any exact details right now, but it is just unfortunate, and this just... There's a lot of assholes out there. I don't use that language in my videos often, but that's what it takes for something like this to get canceled. So I'm really, really sorry to those of you in Japan that were looking forward to it. Hopefully you'll get another Nintendo Live later next year without people being such jerks. Now from sad news into some exciting potential news as we have some brand new Metroid Prime 4 rumors or a rumor and I actually have some of my own amendum to this. It actually comes from Papa Genos, a fellow YouTuber who posted an interesting thing on his own Discord server that's now making some rounds. He said, the thing I have heard is that Prime 4 is basically done and has been done for a while, but the cutscenes are apparently really bad or were a few months ago. So that's what was delaying the game. I do believe Prime 4 will be a Switch title and not specifically made for Switch 2, but maybe that's changed. At this point, I haven't heard. Just the fact I know it's basically been in a finished state for a while, with the delay being related to needing to polish up the cutscenes, had me hopeful we could see it soon. But again, so far as I've heard, nothing about what Nintendo could bring to the game awards. And we all know Metro Prime 4 was not at the game awards. That was maybe one big announcement people thought could happen. Now, I want to put a caveat here and add my own amendment. In. I actually heard earlier this year that Prime 4 was also done. So this isn't actually new news for me. I didn't really hear anything about the cutscenes. I'm sort of under the impression that the reason they haven't shown the game yet is it has been moved to become a cross-generation title. So they don't really want to show it off until after Switch 2 gets revealed. And then they can obviously drop the Prime 4 as 
coming to both platforms, a dual release, yada, yada. Nintendo has done this before. So look, that's the impression I'm under. I haven't heard direct confirmation it's going to be on Switch 2. And maybe they don't think it needs to be because of backwards compatibility. But again, if they've invested a lot into this game, and it sure seems like they have it, rebooted development already. So I do think that Nintendo wants to give it its best chance at sales success. And that might be releasing both on Switch and, you know, the hype surrounding Switch 2's launch. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, you know, Metroid Prime 4 is one of those games that keeps cropping up here and there, but Nintendo just doesn't talk about it. So on to 2024 and maybe at the February Direct. Now this last story is about Nintendo Switch 2, but it's just a small update and it's more so to quell the fears that Nintendo Switch 2 won't be launching next year. Now we've had a lot of rumors and reports and I'm rarely the source on anything here, but I actually had some, let's just call them friends, I, I can't name who they are, attend the Game Awards and the Game Awards after party. And I have heard back from several of them, let's say around four, that the Switch 2 is definitely coming out in 2024. I can't give a lot of details due to NDAs and protecting sources and protecting my friends, but it does seem that there are some pretty significant major third-party games coming to Nintendo Switch 2, and you could try to take the guesses at those games as much as you want. I'm not going to give you anything. What I will tell you is the chatter, and there was just a little bit of chatter, was that all of the people there, yeah, it's coming, to, it's coming next year. Switch 2 is coming out next year. Now, if you might want to know, hey, what about the release timing? When are they going to reveal it? People weren't prying into that kind of stuff. You don't want to break a lot of NDAs and all that and get in big trouble. But I will just say, yeah, the chatter at the after party and everything is that Nintendo Switch 2 is definitely coming next year. And if you're like, well, how could that chatter be happening? And, you know, how does this mean or anything? Look, Doug Bowser was at the party. A.G. Aonuma was at the party. So Nintendo employees were literally there. So if the chatter was untrue, I'm sure that they probably would have shut it down. So I'm just going to leave it at that. No details on specs, no details on features or the specific games or the launch timing. Just, hey, if you're worried that this system isn't coming next year, it's going to be here. So by the end of calendar year 2024, I am now more confident than ever. And these are my own sources. So putting my own neck on the line, we are getting Nintendo Switch 2 next year. Now that's going to do it for today's episode of Prime News. A lot of really, really big stories. Didn't jump into too much of the comedy this time around. Unfortunately, when I had such a serious story in there, I didn't know that it really felt right. But you know what? That's all right. I want to thank you for being here and I will catch you in the next video.